I'm Eric Parker this morning on CT 21. We're looking back at a year living through the pandemic from the first patient diagnosed in our state last March to the hope we now have this March that the end is in sight. Governor Ned Lamont reflects on what we've been through and what it's been like as the head of our state having to deal with this crisis. And in our Sunday spotlight, Jim Coplick, the legendary concert promoter on when concerts could return to places like the Xfinity and Toyota Oakdale theaters. It's all this Sunday, March 14th. CT 21 starts right now. From Channel 3, this is Connecticut's most watched current affairs program, CT 21 with Eric Parker. Good morning. This past year has been filled with fear, frustration, deep loss on many fronts. And now some hope. This morning, Governor Ned Lamont is joining us to talk about what it's been like to lead the state through this COVID crisis. Governor, thank you for being with us this morning. And I want to just start with this. Where do we stand? You, you've lived through a year of this as we all have. Where do we stand this morning? I think we're getting better every day. We're going to have uh, the vast majority of our folks, 55 and above, uh, vaccinated within the next uh, 10 days, two weeks. That allows us to continue to safely reopen our restaurants and retail establishments. But uh, there's a wild card out there. It's called the variant. So things could change. We watch that carefully. All right. I want to take you back to when we first started covering this on a daily basis. You started with your daily news updates. And one of those updates involved the first confirmed case in our state. I want to play that for you and then get your reaction. Take a look. This is not unexpected. And we've been prepared for this, well prepared for this. So that was in Danbury, Governor. I think the first thing everyone watching this morning won't be able to believe is nobody's wearing masks in that video. It's so crazy to look back at pictures from back then and think the, of the time before masks. But as you were reading that announcement in Danbury that day about that first case, what was going through your head at that point? That I had seen this uh, pandemic coming. You saw it in Wuhan, but that sounded like a long way away. Then it was in Seattle. I said, oh, that's the United States. Then it was in New Rochelle. But I'll tell you, Eric, it... it um, it was like a body blow when we had our first infection. And you're right. We're all standing there. You know, nobody's six feet apart. Nobody's wearing a mask. It just reminds you how little we knew about COVID back then and how much we've learned in the subsequent 12 months. I want to ask you about that because one of the things we heard from you a lot back in March and in the early days of this pandemic was I'm talking to the experts, the epidemiologists, the health department, everybody's involved in this. Obviously, as the chief executive, you have to get a range of different possibilities. Were they giving you a worst case scenario? And how did that compare to what actually happened? I, I think to some degree, people were just um, learning on the go. Remember, we had Dr. Jerome Adams. He was the Surgeon General of the United States. And he came up here just about that same time, uh, sort of saying, don't wear a mask. It probably is going to mean you're going to be touching your face too much. He had Dick Blumenthal, Senator Blumenthal and I washing our hands and singing happy birthday to make because we thought everything was uh, transmitted by touch. I don't say that to knock anybody. I say we had a lot to learn and we learned along the way. And thank God here in Connecticut, we have um, an amazing life sciences, healthcare community. And we relied upon the experts. And certainly we all did learn as we went along. One of the big announcements came on March 15th. Uh, you made the announcement about closing the schools. I want to take a look at that video. I'm issuing an executive order here now that uh, we're going to close all schools by the end of uh, business uh, Monday. Now, we can see there, Governor, just uh, in a, a short period of time from that first soundbite we played to that one, you can feel the weight of this thing weighing on you. To make an announcement like that, shutting down every school in the state, certainly something no governor comes into office expecting to have to do. What was that announcement like and, and what was the gravity of that moment for you? kind of broke my heart. I mean, I wanted to be the education governor. I said, uh, this is our opportunity for these kids. Let's not waste it. And then there you are, um, closing down school, sending kids home, and uh, not knowing when they're going to be able to come back. Um, so I, I, but I got to tell you, Eric, um, most of the schools had already closed down by the time we made that announcement. So I think the people had a, a proper sense of anxiety and fear about covid and we're sort of taking the right measures early on. And we're trying to do our best to get our schools reopened, first of all, for remote learning as soon as we could. You talked about that body blow of having the first confirmed case. Certainly a very emotional announcement just a few weeks later when you had to announce the first death in our state. Uh, we have that video as well. An 88-year-old man 
went from nursing home to Danbury Hospital, and he died of uh, complications related to COVID-19. Standing there with Miguel Cardona, now the Secretary of Education for our nation. Uh, you made that announcement, and obviously you talked about the reality when you had a confirmed case, but certainly the first death. I mean, we've now seen 7,700 Connecticut citizens lose their lives. That announcement, obviously you had to have been expecting to have to make it, but was it still a solemn moment as you look back at this year? You don't expect something like that. You don't prepare for it. And uh, one of the very first fatalities was a great friend of my dad. So it really takes it right home. And there was uh, a lot of suffering and there was a lot of fear. And um, and we had no idea how much this wave was going to crash. I mean, we saw what going on in Italy, for example, where the uh, hospitals were overwhelmed. We saw some of that in Queens. And we were just trying to stay one step ahead of this thing. You mentioned the Italy, and that was one of the things I thought about was the news coverage from overseas where things were just so, so bad. Were there any moments, those middle of the night, 2 a.m., wake up uh, in the middle of the night and think, geez, this thing might be getting ahead of us? Did you have those moments of fear that the virus was going to outpace your efforts? Yeah, I had those fears a lot. But we also have, um, you know, Josh Jabal and Deirdre Gifford took the lead on our behalf. Uh, Deirdre had come up from... Uh, HHS, so she had really strong um, healthcare credentials. We got our hospitals working together at one. We'd had sort of a cantankerous relationship with the hospitals going back uh, five years. And it was just incredible how when our Southern hospitals were getting overwhelmed, you know, Hartford Health and Trinity were able to bring in the reinforcements when it came to mass and nurses. So we always stayed ahead of this thing. Not by much, but we stayed ahead of it. Is there anything as you look back, obviously 2020 hindsight, anything you wish you had done differently? Would you have closed the state earlier, for instance? Anything you wish, knowing what we know now, you had done differently, Governor? I guess if everything we could have done earlier uh, would have made a bit of a difference. Um, if we had um, ordered up masks a month earlier before everybody else was uh, realizing how important it was to have masks. By the way, Eric, there was no national stockpile down there in Washington. Uh, there was nothing down there. So uh, the states are on their own. And, um, you know, we stayed just ahead of the curve there. But I think, generally speaking, doing everything earlier would have helped a lot. Um, we needed, obviously, testing that was very slow to come. I mean, remember, we were just saying, if you came in from overseas or you have flu-like symptoms, stay home. We didn't really have much exactitude. But um, we took care of what we could take care of. Well, from the fight of finding PPE to getting the testing in place, we're going to take a pause right now, Governor. Come back with more talking about where we go from here, the vaccines and what's next. More with Governor Ned Lamont on CT21 right after this.